classic from Bob the Piper, English Garden. Right, okay, so sorry for the delays this morning. A couple of delays, so um, yeah, apologies for them. Um, uh, I don't mind sharing with you. The delay was um, basically a printer cartridge that needed changing um, before I could print the worksheets out. So um, apologies there. We're not that far behind. So um, let's get going. Now this morning we're looking at multiplying and dividing fractions. Okay. So the main idea here is to learn that skill. How do we multiply and divide fractions? Okay, and I'm really going to focus on the skill involved on this, and the the theory behind it is very much going to take us about two to three hours to crack. But we can get the basics, and we'll work on a little bit of that, and then dive straight into the skill of how you do it. Okay, so that goes against my um, thought of philosophy thoughts in a lot of ways because I think it's important to have that understanding of what's going on so we'll do our best on this one the skill of multiplying and dividing fractions what you're actually doing the math skill involved is quite easy okay so let's get cracking with the worksheets that I've um, done today okay we've got the answers on here as well which is absolutely fine um, so we're starting off with with this little worksheet here so what's going on then basically multiplying by a whole number so we're making this fraction twice as big now this is really important to get our head round little diagrams for fractions are really important so um, if I have split this up into eight looking at this part here now I've got three eighths so coloring in three and basically I'm multiplying by two so I've got two lots of three eighths so I've got three eighths there and let's draw three eighths here three eighths there three eighths here so all together I've got six eighths one two three four five one, two, three, four, five, six, six eighths. So altogether, I've got six eighths. So let's have a look at this mathematically, what's going on. So to make that a six, we're multiplying the three by the two. Okay, a lot of people write these fractions out like this and put the two on the top, but I like it in the middle. I think, I think the two in the middle of the fraction is better, but we've got to remember that it's, just the top bit there the numerator multiplied by the whole number three twos are six there's nothing going on with the de denominators it's still split into eight still eight parts you can see that so that doesn't change six over eight so let's have a look at um, this next one one fifth times three answers can we type them in please a fifth times three remember to use that symbol there to represent a fraction one fifth times three okay so while you're typing those in a big morning to uh, morning big good morning to Alfie um, good morning Alfie good morning Lydia okay nice to see you all again is, is the other Lydia here? Two Lydias we should have. Yes, well done. Both Lydias are here. Oh, nice one, Heath. Well done, mate. Well done for joining us. It's been a long time. You've, you, you should have been here earlier, but it's good to see you, Heath. Well happy now. Good lads. Three-fifths. Fantastic. And the next one. So, same idea here. Good morning, Dylan. Nice to see you this morning. What a start. Same idea here. So we've basically made three lots of that fraction, two lots of that fraction. So if we look at this fraction here, we've got a mixed number, meaning we've got a whole number part and a fraction part. So we can basically do these sections um, separately. Um, so we've got, we've got to t make everything three times as big. So a whole number times three, that's going to be three, three lots of one. And then we need one quarter times by three, so we need three quarters. So although that looks a complicated um, calculation, it really is straightforward. Third times four, okay, we've got 
four lots of a third. Now this one's an interesting one because that's called an improper fraction because the, the numerator is bigger than the no denominator. Does it matter that we've written it like that? Not at all. Not at all. We can leave the answer like that. But what we need to do is look closely in the question to see if um, the question is asking you to give your answer as a mixed number. So if it, say, if it doesn't say anything, leave it like that. Don't put yourself at risk to lose a mark. And then if it does, um, if it does say a mixed number, okay, got to imagine what's going on here. I've got a shape. I've split it into thirds because that's the denominator. But I've got four thirds. That's three thirds. So I need another third, which kind of looks a bit like that. So altogether, four thirds makes a whole, one whole, and one third left. Okay, but this, whatever this number here is, the, the number you're splitting it into, if you have the same number on the top, that gives you a whole. So three thirds plus one third, okay, gives you one and a third. Right, next one. Uh, again, we'll do this by splitting the numbers up. What you can actually do is create an improper fraction here, okay, and that would be actually 19 um, over 9. Okay, two and one ninth, and then do it that way. But another way would be to take the whole number first. Three twos are six, and three one ninths, one ninth, three times one ninth, add one ninth, add one ninth is three ninths. And this bit here could even be simplified with what we did last um, lesson. Okay, and that's going to be one third because three goes into three. Remember all this kind of stuff? Divide by three. Long as you divide by the same number, we're okay. So that gives us six and a third. Diane. Okay. So we've got seven viewers this morning. That's pretty good. I know that we had a lot of viewers the other day, which is amazing. Um, and also, um, yeah, we're getting a lot of people watching later on. So I'd like to say this morning, keep watching us even if it's later on. And a good morning and a welcome to you guys out there who are probably just getting up, I presume. Okay, let's have a look at this next one. Now, I do have the school camera so you can notice it's a lot clearer than it has been, but I've got to get lined up in the right place. There we go. How are we doing there? That's looking... Looking better, okay. Let's move it over a little bit. Sorry about this. One or two technical issues today. Okay, right, let's have a look at this. A third times a quarter. A third times a quarter. Right, so um, to, have, to really get an idea of what's going on here. And, and I said we'll look at a bit of theory and then we're going to look closely at the scale, okay. So what this is saying is we've got a third. Now, let's have a look at what a third is on this diagram, okay? A third of this diagram. So how do we split this up into thirds? What we can do is split it up into thirds in rectangles like that. So can you see, so we've got one rectangle there going across, so that's one third that's another third and that's another third okay so if we're thinking about starting off with the third okay this is what i'm starting off with the pencil the pencil shading is what i'm starting off with all of that okay so i've got a third of the whole shape and then i get that third and i want to split it up into quarters so i've got one of those rectangles right now and I want to split it up, I'm going to multiply it by quarters, and split it up into four. So I've got my third, and I find a quarter of it. So what I do then is go back to the third, and then split the third into a quarter. So I need a quarter of that part there. Okay, so you can see I've um, cut off the... Um, the other part of the shape that's that's irrelevant well it isn't irrelevant we'll come back to it but just for this next bit we just need to ignore it because we've got our third there's a third one third two thirds three thirds makes a whole um 
then we're going to get a quarter of it. So we need a quarter now of that shape. So it's already done for us, but I'll shade it in anyway. So it's one of those boxes. Because there's four boxes, four mini rectangles, and we need one mini rectangle. So now, let's have a look at the whole shape and compare it. I've got one mini, mini rectangle compared with a total of 12. 4, 8, 12. So this gives us an answer of 12, 1 12th. Brilliant. Now, the way that we like to do maths at the moment, especially in year seven, is in, have things to move around in, have a, have a, have a, have a, a diagram, and then look at the, um, the numbers written down. Okay, so we haven't got, I haven't got anything to manipulate, neither of you, because we're online, but we can look at that diagram first, the symbol of it, and then relate it to what's going on here. This is called the abstract method, the, the abstract version. This is the, the diagrammatical. So let's have a look now. What's got, how can we relate this to this maths here? Well, looking at the top number, that's a one. So to get a one, we do once one is one. To get a 12, we do three fours of 12. So what we're actually doing here is we're multiplying the numerators the top numbers together separately and then the denominators together separately and this is really common sense isn't it that's what you'd expect to happen now the big problem here is not this how to multiply multiplying fractions is really easy understanding them is a little bit tricky but the big problem is when we relate this to addition. People do the same thing for addition and it's completely wrong. Okay, but we're looking at addition and subtraction tomorrow. So let's not get too bogged down in that, but just have that in mind. The addition and multiplication of fractions are two different things. Okay, so that's, so that's how we multiply. We take the numerators, multiply them together. Then the denominators, we multiply them together. And this is a diagrammatical reason why. Okay, it's not proof, but it's, it does explain it quite well with this example. Okay, so moving on, let's have a look at another version. Okay, so what have we got? What have we got going on here? Okay, so we've got two thirds. So let's have a look at the start of this first, like we did last time, in a similar fa fashion. Okay, I actually think. Yeah, these sheets are in the wrong order. I've done the odd one first, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so we've got the answers here. Uh, but what's going on? So um, what we're starting off with is two thirds. So how do we split this shape into thirds? Okay, in a similar fashion to what we've just done. One third, two thirds, three thirds. Now remember we're starting with the pencil shading. We've got two thirds so we've got all that block and all that block. So one third, two thirds. We're now multiplying it by three fifths. Okay, by three fifths. Now with our thirds if you take just one box or one rectangle of the thirds so there's one third, we need that because we're starting with two thirds. There's another third, we need that because we're starting with two thirds, so there's two thirds. Remember looking at the pencil, there's three thirds. So that's what we need. Now just take one of those, one of those thirds. We are now multiplying it by three fifths. So we now need to split this box, this one third, into five because it's five parts. One, two, three, four, five, and we need three of them. So you can see for that one third, we need three fifths. So we need to split it up into five and take three of them, shade three of them. It's just like how we started. Take that box, find, split it into five, or that, take that rectangle, split it into five, shade in three, just like the basics. Okay, so coloured in pink, that's what we want. Now, but we need to do it again because we've got two thirds to start with. So we repeat it for it again, okay, and then we pull it all together to give us our big shape and it'll give us one, two, three, four, five, six, 
out of 15. Okay, again, looking at the actual maths, the core maths, the skill, multiply across, multiply across, two threes is six, three fives are 15, brilliant. So a good idea of understanding why this is working is important. Okay, there's more of these as we go along. But a quick look at division, okay? Now, I don't want to get too bogged down into the theory of division. That's where it gets more complicated, okay? But what we've got to think about is that the division is the reverse process of... Um, Oh, I've just got a heart sent. Whoever sent that, fun. thank you very much. Okay. Um, so divisions, the the, um, the reverse of multiplying, um, the reverse uh, process. But also, one way of thinking about it is, if I've got um, four and I share it by two, okay, four counters and I share by two, Okay, I split it into two. But all, also, what we're doing is we're seeing how many twos, how many lots of two fit into four. And that's what we need to think about with fractions, dividing by fractions. How much of this shape fits into the other shapes? Okay, and that's where it gets complicated. But the skill involved in dividing by fractions is, is fairly straightforward. Okay. So uh, let's just look at this, okay? We've got a half, so we're shading it by half, and we're dividing it by a quarter, okay? So um, now don't panic if you don't get the theory behind this, okay? But I need to try and explain it to you. It's not, we, we may come back to it. because This is a really good example. So let's start off with the shape. There's our shape. The whole thing is our shape. We've got a half of the shape, because that's what we're starting off with, okay? And what we're seeing is how many quarters fit into that shape. So if I split the shape into quarters as well, and I've got a half that I start with, which is there, okay? How many quarters fit into that half? Well, I've split into quarters already. There's my half, and I've got two quarters. Okay? And that diagram is really quite good to understand what's going on. How many quarters fit into a half? I start off with a half. I see how many quarters will fit into it. It's just the same thing as the division with the counters, really. But the interesting thing is, looking at the maths... When you divide, people tell me when I divide, the number goes down. But with fractions, it's the opposite thing. Okay. What happens is that we end up with a whole number. Now, looking at the math, it's tricky to see. But there is a trick that I'm going to just tell you about. I'm going to revert. To, to make this two, the maths trick is to get the quarter and flip it upside down okay that's how you do this i mean division is is quite hard for fractions but if you get this little concept it really helps with understanding so flip the second fraction and what you end up with is four over two and four counters divided by two is two so that's how we do it mathematically okay but the understanding is quite important Brilliant. Right. Okay. So let's finish off with a little bit of a, a recap. So multiplying. Multiplying. So two fractions, two thirds times three fifths. What we're doing is we're multiplying the numbers straight across the numerators, top numbers, numerators, going straight across. Two threes are six, three fives are 15. And thinking about things di diagrammatically, okay, as well, uh, uh, to get that deep understanding is important, but choose simple diagrams to work with. When we're looking at dividing, the key to dividing is how many of this um, part 
goes into this part, how many fits into that. That's the way to understand it and remember the di diagrammatical way. But the trick, okay, I'm reluctant to, to, to teach too many tricks because I, I want you to get that deep understanding as well. So just have a, a if you can, just have a, a rewind of the diagram of it. But, but the, the maths part, the skill part of this, and I said at the start, we need to concentrate on the skill just as much as the theory and it all sort of beds in to get that mastery standard so you take the second fraction flip it and then multiply and because it's a reverse process by we know how to times that's easy but you've got to if you if you do the reverse process of um a divide basically you need the reverse process of this fraction which is where the flip comes the adjustment comes okay 10 out of 3 and remember that if the fraction does go up if the final answer goes up that's normal okay that's a normal thing to happen when we're dividing by fractions all right and actually decimals as well if you divide by a decimal it's normal for the number to go up in value Okay, so that's that's it basically. Now, this topic here does require lots of practice. So, if you want to follow up this work, please check the Mr. Corbett website um, for some um, practice questions, and also have a look through um, you know the video again to get the understanding. But that's it for today, folks. It's great to see everyone, and a big well, uh, a big hello to the um, viewers who join us later in the afternoon. Okay, and so on. And um, uh, tomorrow, just just for information, tomorrow we'll be doing addition. Okay, now addition of fractions. It's it's easier to understand. But it's hard. It's harder to um, do the maths. This is hard to understand, but easy to do the maths. So it's kind of the reverse um, situation. Um, and also a quick mention about um, next week. Okay, I'll add another heart. That's pretty good. Um, that somebody's just put a heart on the screen. Well done to them. Um, much appreciated. Okay, thumbs ups are good. I like thumbs up okay oh and uh, so just going through next week it is officially half term next week um now i know schools open and stuff and i may be going in but there will be a break from videos next week but keep your eyes posted on facebook because i may do a couple midweek but at the moment um i'm going to just have a little break and i would advise you to get all your work up to date I know that teachers are not setting loads of more work for next week because um, it is officially half term week and bank holiday Monday and all that sort of stuff so that's it for today so I'll leave you with uh, Bob the Piper from Nantwich I am paying him money it's 20 quid an hour so please enjoy remember that Warner Brothers have stolen my videos so I'm not allowed to do the normal music but enjoy this is going to be like in the charts soon it is English Country Garden by Bob the Piper See you later, folks.